about this morning. I came up with the term adversity. Originally, I kind of wanted to do a sermon on change. I wanted to do one on patience, and I had the bright idea of trying to combine them all in one, and adversity kind of uh, encompassed that. But um, as I was writing things, it ended up going more towards one than the other. So I know Jordan said he uh, came up with an interesting slide. So we'll see how well it fits with uh, what the sermon ends up being because I don't, didn't do a slideshow or anything. But So adversity. We define adversity as difficulties or misfortune. We all deal with adversity throughout our lives. And we all deal with it differently. Some people bury it down deep. Some talk about it openly. Some may even bring others down with them with the, the idea that misery loves company. I guess what I got thinking on this topic is of late we have had, as a congregation, there's been some turmoil, some adversity over the last few months. And honestly, if you're unaware of it, I'm grateful for that. That, yeah, I'm not going to go digging into it and covering a bunch of specifics and details because it feels like things have started settling down a little bit and there's no sense in reigniting turmoil and conflict. But, but it's also been heavy on my own mind trying to figure out why we ended up in that position in the first place. And then also with the sermon series Harold just wrapped up, Going into some detail on various sins, I've, I personally feel that there's some struggles going on within people on an individual basis. So I wanted to take today to look at the Word, go into the book, for some guidance and reassurance on coping through adverse times. That being said, I opened up with defining adversity. I like that. (laughs) I open up defining adversity as misfortunes or difficulties. So why might Herald Sermons on Sin have triggered some of us to have some personal challenges? I think it's because bringing sin out of the closet, talking about it openly and frankly, Personally, it stirred me to reflect and be honest with myself that there are things I, me, JD, need to do differently. Things that, after having light shown on them, I need to and want to change. Change. Let's do a little show of hands here. Raise your hand if you like change. There's got to be a couple. That's a... For the most part, people don't like to change a whole lot. Honestly, it's kind of change. I'm not talking about the coins in your pockets from getting, uh, getting your cup of coffee this morning or whatever the case may be, but change. It's a big old scary word. And honestly, the concept of it in our modern world is probably one of the greatest sources of adversity out there. Let's take it a step farther here. When I was working in swimming pools, which I did for about 15 years, and then again when I was working at Walmart, I either was the source of or the instigator for organizational change, or he had to lead people through organizational changes. And over the course of that time, and going through those changes with people, I learned how much people actually resist change. I think, honestly, it's part of our innate human character to resist change, to be static, to be get comfortable with the way things are. The problem is, if we don't change, we end up suffering consequences. 
you can think about it, going to your doctor, you get the blood work results back and go, oh man, I guess eating all the, that fast food and all those hamburgers and all that, really not doing such good on my cholesterol. Maybe I need to change up my diet. But dang, it tastes so good. But if you don't, what's going to happen eventually? You're going to clog up those arteries and probably drop from a heart attack. So kind of a natural consequence there. Did I fat thumb this thing? Yep, I did. So we resist change until it hurts too much for us not to change. Until the consequences of not changing outweigh the comfort and security of maintaining the status quo or staying static. Do you know that there's actually college programs out there for change leadership or change management? I actually started one of those when I started working for Walmart. Not intending to go back to Walmart, but intending to go back into recreation. And um, Well, obviously I decided not to go down that path. I didn't finish the degree, but it was part of a, it was especially within an MBA program. You can learn a lot about change by studying it, but. So, here's the funny thing. This book right here tells us that there's going to be change in our lives. I don't care if you're looking at Old Testament, looking at New Testament. We're told that there's going to be change. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 as a prime example. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather, stone, or to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Love polar opposites in there, but it's all change. And you notice that there's a huge component of that is time. Time changes, no matter how we look at it. Time changes everything. But it doesn't just stop there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 13, 11, specifically. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. As we grow, we change. Our hearts change, our desires change, our perspective changes as we learn new things, the challenge of what we once took for granted. Change isn't a bad thing. So given that we've got examples of change within the Bible, why is it that it causes us so much adversity? We know that change is part of life and part of our growth as planned and directed by our Heavenly Father. I think one of the greatest reasons we struggle with change is the fear of the unknown. Change makes things different, and we often don't know what that looks like. So it scares us. So what do we do with that? Let's take a look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It gives us a pretty good little starting point. 
We're going to actually start at five. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when we're dealing with adversity, when we're dealing with change, and we're getting scared, the word just tells us how to deal with it, to give it to the Lord in prayer, to be thankful for that opportunity, for that growth, for that development, for that shift, to embrace the process. And I know that there's hundreds of other examples and ways in there that we could be looking at it and more guidance. But the key is, is giving it over to the Lord. Let's go on back to the Old Testament for a second. We're going to go to, or maybe, the, where did I put it? There it is. Going back there. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 43. Verses 18 and 19. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing new things. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The way I read that, the way I interpret it, is God's changing things. For us, he's making a way for his will to be done, to accomplish greatness, for things to grow, change, and develop. Kind of like that spider. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it took on a whole new form there. we got to trust in the Lord as we grow, as we develop, as we look at changing of our circumstances. We never know what's going to be coming down the pipeline for us, whether that's relationships, whether that's our health, changing the seasons, changing the weather. Look out there today and remember what it was like out there yesterday. It all changes. If we stay it this way that we always were, as individuals, as a congregation, we're going to be stuck in that same rut that we've always been. With change comes opportunity. It's not always easy, and it's often scary. But so long as we trust in the Lord and give it to Him, we have nothing left to fear. I know it's a short one, but I'm going to close this out with one last little piece of why we shouldn't be afraid of change. It comes from Hebrews 13.8. The reason why we shouldn't fear change and it should causes adversity, is this. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Short and sweet. Short and sweet, it was. And uh, since the clock is still running and there's